My name is Miguel Angel, um, also known as the Flatter Shaman. Uh, actually, that name just came this week, and I'm going to start a channel now, so we'll see if it's even available. How did you first get involved with Flatter? Man, it was, it was funny, man. I, I'm a researcher, you know, I was, I was already just like you, man, uh, you know, protesting Monsanto, Wall Street, you know, GMOs, uh, uh, fluoride in the water, vaccines, obviously 9-11 truth. I was already just an open, you know, my, my heart, my mind was open, so I was already in, in a place where I'm like, okay, you know, we've been lied to about all these things, what else have we been lied to? So I just wanted to, to dig deeper. I, I, I researched into Satanism, into the occult, I, I mean, all of it, you know, pedophilia, the Pizzagate, all that stuff. Uh, the Jews now and the, and the staged uh, false flag shootings and all that. Uh, but it was uh, two, a little over two years ago, so, uh, September 2016. A friend of mine posted a video, uh, a video about uh, what's it called, Mandela Effect. And I, I was watching this Mandela Effect video. I was like, "Whoa, man, this is this is pretty heavy stuff." I'm like, "That stuff kind of makes sense." I, you know, the Berenstain, Berenstain Bears. You know, it was all this stuff that I totally remember that was just changed and. Then, and I was just watching that for a while. You know, you get stuck in a in, in a time warp, and you go down a rabbit hole. You like watch like ten videos. But then I saw this flat Earth video on the side, and I had kind of seen it and heard about the conversation. But I was like, yeah, whatever. I just kind of, you know, not even going to entertain that for now. Just pushed it to the side all the time that I did. Well, this night I was like that open book, and like I was just like open to receive. And it was like I don't know, 12, 1 in the morning, and I'd already watched all these Mandela uh, Mandela Effect videos. And I'd, ah, let me just click this flatter thing right here. What is this? Let me just let me see what that's all about. And I watched the video, and I can't even remember which one it was because I just stayed up and watched like 30 videos in a row after that. So I, I honestly can't say which one it was, but one of the first ones was uh, Flatter Clues by uh, Mark Sargent. Uh, and that one just I loved like the philosophy of that one, of the the, the depth of like you know, why this would happen and, and how they would manage to do it and, you know, what we as humans, you know, would do if we did find out something, us compared to animal, you know, herded, herded animals, there's herded humans as well, but a herded human could also be unherded as well, well, once he figures out you're actually in a cage or something. So, you know, that one opened my mind, uh, Dave Murphy's video, our flat enclosed dome explained that one. Video and then of course Eric Dubay came in there and Mike Jack also ODD TV saw his like his trilogy that I watched like all the major ones that night and it was just like boom so after that night I was like for sure 100% the Earth is not a spinning ball uh, going through space at uh, ludicrous well this is a, a term I like to say a spinning space rock with perfectly formed spherical water wrapping around it hurling through infinite space at for astronomical distance not ludicrous speeds for astronomical dis distances. <laughs> Try to say that time that ten times fast. Right. I'll say it again. A spinning space rock with perfect, perfectly formed spherical water wrapping around it, hurling through infinite space for ludicrous speeds for astronomical distances. See, I can't even say it. You know what I mean? It's really hard. It's like whoa when you say it. Like that's what we're doing. Fucking, we're flying right now. You know what I mean? I want to do a comedy skit with like a big fan and just be like. You know what I mean? It's just so silly and crazy. And, uh, you know, and I remember as a kid, you know, when you, you see the globe in the classroom and you're like, you know, students, this is where you live, the ball's spinning. And you're a little kid, you know, like you want to know about, you think school, you trust the, you trust the school, the education system, your government or the people in charge know what they're talking about. So they're telling us this, well, like, and then our first questions came, like, well, how do people on the bottom, you know, are standing down here in Australia, how are they doing that? How are ships on the side of the earth, like everything's just, and they say, well, it's gravity, you know, they tell you, they just tell you what it is. And then we had these questions when we were little and it didn't make sense. Well, like, okay, gravity is pulling everything in. We just had these questions, but I remember me personally, um, I kind of got embarrassed for having questions because I was kind of taught, like in the early 80s, that you don't question your elders, you don't question your teachers, it's disrespectful. So I, I kind of had that crammed down in my, in my head, so I stopped asking the questions. And I thought, this is crazy that I had this thought. That, well, maybe, maybe I'm just dumb and I'm not ready to understand this yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and just accept it for now and then I'll just get it later because everybody else uh, is understanding this and I didn't want to be the only guy out that didn't understand it, so I felt like I was dumb. And then I just silenced myself forever and I never asked the question again. And then finally this one night I was just open and I asked the question, well, wait a minute, let me go back to that question. Why are we, why are we on the underside of a ball up to the other people? How, how are we flying this out? Wait, wait a minute. I don't remember in class at all ever experimenting with ever, anything. They just told us what was true and you know, we just said, okay, the sun is 70, 93 million miles away. Well, wait a minute, who, who measured that distance? 
what's the name of the scientist, what are the tools that he used, and can any human on the earth replicate that experiment where you actually pull your tape measure or your, your laser or your, what, a telescope? I don't even know what kind of tool would be used to measure the distance of something that far away just by looking at it. Hey, I'm looking at it. Man, this thing is this many degrees. I'm like, whoa, whoa how, how's that possible? So started to ask the questions and I just came to, came to the truth that it's not freaking ball spinning in space. It's definitely flat. But on, on even deeper than that, I even ask myself now, is it even flat? Is this even a physical world that we live in? You know, I'm, I'm starting to question, like, is this just a simulation? I'm, I'm on the holodeck like in Star, Star Trek and it just feels real. You know, like the Morpheus quote in, in The Matrix, you know, uh, if what, um, uh, what is real, and if you mean what is real by what you see, taste, hear, and touch, uh, you're, you're merely talking about electrical impulses traveling through your body and into your brain and telling you what you're seeing. You know, so it's just an electrical impulse. We live in an electric universe. And then we go into the electromagnetic spectrum, which makes sense on the flat Earth. I don't know, it's real deep and it's really awesome. I just love being a part of this community um, and it's great. Uh, now you've got a, some particular expertise with like weapons and stuff, so can you talk a little bit about that and, and the Coriolis effect? Because that's always a, a big question with this topic. Right, yeah, well, the Coriolis effect uh, is one of my areas of expertise um, for many reasons, just because I understand motion, I understand um, how things operate in, in the physical world, natural physics of motion or or whatever, standing bodies of water. But as a Marine, I was a form, I'm a former U.S. Marine, five-year U.S. Marine infantryman, weapons expert. So what that means is, well, my, my official title MOS is 0351 anti-tank assault man. And I was basically employed, uh, I was a demolitions expert, so I know all about demolitions, which is another reason why I know 9-11 is an inside job. Um, so we worked with Army Corps of Engineers on all the kinds of explosives. Uh, but another weapon we mastered was an 83 millimeter warhead rocket launcher called the Small Shoulder Mounted Automatic Weapon. Uh, and it has a rifle, nine millimeter rifle bore sighted to the rocket. And what bore sighted means, it means whatever my nine millimeter round, wherever that target, that round hits the target is where my rocket is gonna hit. So we have, so we don't waste an expensive, you know, $10,000 rocket. We shoot the round that it's got a tracer round and you can see the round go all the way down in your scope and your sights and wherever that round hits, let's say you're off about two feet to the left and all you do is move two clicks to the right and you fire your rocket and it hits it. So that's one of the weapons. Uh, trained, master training and all the heavy machine guns, 240 Golf, uh, the, the, the Mark 19 grenade launcher, the 50 cal machine gun, cross trained with the mortar, Platoon. So we were a weapons platoon, we cross trained in all of our weapons. Well, get this, my roommate in the Marines was uh, uh, on, in our infantry as a machine gunner. He went to the state platoon, the sniper indoc. He took the sniper indoc. I never actually took the sniper indoc, but I, we were so, such good friends and I loved the whole concept of the sniper. I always wanted to be one, so I actually did training with him. I got the sniper manual, uh, even helped him make his ghillie suit. You know, the ghillie suit, the, um, the camouflage suit that they wear. Anyways, I've the, done the training with him personally. He personally trained me uh, with a 50 cal sniper rifle. Never once in my career in the Marines, not of all the weapons I've used, the rocket launchers, the missiles, uh, the long distance shooting, uh, never used Coriolis effect. I never heard the words before. It's not even in the sniper manual. So when I was in the Marine Corps, I never even heard those words. I didn't even hear those words until I got out of the Marine Corps sometime in college later, and I hear about Coriolis effect. And now I'm starting to hear this from people that don't have any experiments, experience with uh, weaponry, uh, military, long range uh, weapons. And people are starting to talk about this Coriolis effect that snipers adjust for Coriolis. And it's total bull, bull crap. It's, it's totally a myth. And I'll show you why. Um, and, I'll, and I have a challenge right now for any sniper um, to meet me in person. Uh, it's a $20,000 bet challenge for any sniper or anybody who thinks you're a great shooter to meet me in person and, and you show me what this Coriolis calculation is. So a Coriolis adjustment for a spin is gonna have to uh, be, be based on a few factors here. So what I was taught shooting, there's four, uh, there's four elements that you need to, to adjust for. You got your elevation, how high you are, you got your, your bullet round, what, what is the munition that you're using, right? Um, you got your wind resistance, so that's why like on long range, uh, 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 shooting ranges, you'll see the flags down the range. You gotta know where the wind's, wind's blowing and uh, uh, distance to target, right? Those are the four things, distance to your target. So adding another, a fifth 
want Coriolis adjustment, you have to adjust for a spin of the Earth that's going only one direction. So in the globe model, heliocentrism, the Earth is spinning west to east. This is how it's spinning. So when you're in the military, when you get, you get stationed or sent out or deployed, you get deployed at any random place on this planet at any given moment. Uh, you won't know until like a week or even a day before sometimes on a secret operation. So you could be deployed over here in Canada, you can be deployed over here in South America, you can be in Africa right here, you can be in Europe, you know, Somalia, Japan, any of these places. And by the way, I've been stationed in Japan. I've been trained in, in Australia with the Australian Marines down here, uh, Japan, uh, let's see, Indonesia, and then Europe with the uh, Marine Security Guard duty. That's another duty I did. I did special duty with the Marine Security Guards. In 1999, I was a personal guard for President Clinton, Madeleine Albright, worked with the Secret Service. So I was posted up here. So all, And then where I started was Camp Pendleton, California, East Coast also. So I've just been all over this globe, as they say. So everywhere I've been would have a different Coriolis adjustment because if the Earth is spinning 1,000 miles at the equator, if you go down halfway to the South Pole, it's 500 miles per hour right here, and to zero miles per hour. You know what I'm saying? You get the concept. The concept of a spinning ball is going to be slower the higher you go and faster at the equator. So, not only do you have to know at any given moment when you're in a combat situation where you are on this globe, after how fast you're going, you have to actually know which way you're facing, the direction you're facing when you're shooting your weapon at your target. Right? So let's just put ourselves in a combat situation. I'm over here posted up in my ghillie suit and I'm a sniper and I'm looking at an enemy down here and all of a sudden I got an enemy flanking me over here. So now I got two enemies and I'm, I'm spinning a direction in the, in, uh, according to Coriolis and I got to do an adjustment for this guy and then I'll say I turn and face the other direction. Now there's a different Coriolis adjustment. So my challenge is to any long range shooter expert is to meet me in person at any shooting range of your choice, long range shooting range. And I'd like for you to bring your sniper rifle and I'm gonna make some commands. Shoot this target at this distance, facing this direction, and then I'm gonna change you to another direction and I'm gonna ask you to fire that target, put your Coriolis calculation into your shot, and you gotta hit a grouping of five shots in the bullseye on both of them to win $20,000. But this is a bet challenge, not just I'm gonna give you money if you do it, I'm gonna ask you to bring your $20,000 and match my bet and I'm going to get an attorney and everything, and we're going to put that money in a safe. So if you can't, if you can't adjust the Coriolis and hit your tar targets, I win twenty thousand dollars. Life on the ball, fantastic, we don't fall. Ain't it amazing? Amazing how the sun can shine so high. That's what they told you. Life on the ball, gravity explains it all. That explains everything. Be thankful that the moon remains in your sky.